here we have um, an algebra problem and they're giving us the values of x and y. So they're saying if x is 14 and y is 11, what is the value of this right here? So let's go over that really quick. It's saying 5x and it has parentheses x minus y. This means 5x times x minus y. Um, so x is 14, so 5x is 5 times 14. And then x minus y, well, x is 14, y is 11. So 14 minus 11 is 3. And 5 times 14, I think of 5 times 10 is 50, and 5 times 4 is 20, and that's 70. 70 times 3 is just like 7 times 3, but 10 times bigger. So that's 210. Up next we have uh, a problem regarding angles. And it's easy to get lost with all the points and all the names of the angles. Here they are. We have W, X, Z, and Y. And they say Z is a point on the side W, Y. So here's W, Y, and the point Z is on there. They're going to say that because most of these diagrams are not to scale. So you have to think of the rules they give you in the problem and don't assume anything. Um, so triangles WXZ and XYZ are similar. What that means is that the corresponding angles are going to be equal and that their side lengths might be different, but they're proportional. So if one triangle is twice as large as the other, every side will be exactly twice as large. But the angles, the corresponding angles won't change. And they want to know what's the measure of angle WXY. W, X, Y, so that's that big angle right here. That's what they want to know. Now let's go back for a moment and we have to find our corresponding angles. Notice how they list W and X first. That means that this point on this triangle right here, this small triangle, we have this point W, and it corresponds to point X in this other triangle. So notice they're showing you how the triangle was turned. And for me, it visually doesn't make sense. It seems like W should correspond to Y, and this blue triangle should be kind of turned that way. But they're saying, no, no, this corresponds to this point up here. And then we follow the order from there. So next we have X and Y. Well, that means that this point X on the blue triangle matches the point Y on the green triangle. And last, point Z matches point Z on both triangles. So that helps us out a lot. Um, we're trying to figure out this angle right here in red. And what we can do is say, well, if this angle is 20 degrees and W corresponds to X, that means that this little angle right here, let's make that in blue, is also 20 degrees. So two blue angles are both 20 degrees. I label it. And we can keep going with this if we know that we can look at x and y. Well, if point x on this triangle corresponds to y over here, that means whatever those angles are, they're equal. We'll call them x. And z is equal to z. Well, what do we do? We don't need to know angle z, actually, because even though it looks like a right angle, we're not going to use that. We're going to think of uh, this large triangle all the way around because this angle, the blue angle, is one of the angles. It's 20 degrees. The, this x right here is, is the other angle, plus this x over here and 20, because they, they, both of those angles right here make the third angle in the large triangle. Uh, all that added together should equal 180. So now, once we set that up, we have an equation that we can deal with. So 180 degrees will equal this right here. And we add up our x's, we get 2x plus 40, and 20 and 20 is 40. That should equal 180. Subtract 40 from both sides, we get 140 equals 2x, and then divide by 2, so x is equal to 70 degrees. And before we just hesitate and circle 70, let's ask, look at what they're asking for. They're asking for wxy, which is w, x, and I'm sorry, I lost. It's, it's this whole angle right here, going back to our original problem. I'll highlight that. That whole angle. That's WXY. So it's not just X, which is 70, but it's the other 20 degrees we had there before. So it's 70 plus 20, or 90 degrees. And the next problem, 
they want us what is the value of p if um, this equals that so basically they want us to solve I'm going to use the, the distributive property to start so distribute the 2 to the p and the 1 and then the 3 to the p and the 4 that's 3p minus 4 and now I'm just going to move the p's over to one side subtract 2p over here and here keep it balanced and add 4 to both sides at the same time so now I have this is 0 that's 6 4 minus 4 is 0 and 3p minus 2p is p so p should equal 6 and, I, and now I look over here I don't see the answer so I'm doing something wrong and I, I think I see my mistake if I go back um, here we have 3p minus 4 well 3 times 4 is not 4 it's 12 so we fix that so subtracting 12 from both sides and over here 2 minus 12 will not be 6 it would be negative 10 and I'm still not getting the right answer hmm what's going on here let's see 2p plus 2 right and then 3p minus 12 oh so I'd be adding 12 to both sides oops sorry about that this is a mess let me start over 3p minus 12 equals 2p plus 2 so I, I in this case I'm going to take 2p a bit away from both sides keep it balanced and add 12 to both sides Remember the inverse operations here, and we get p equals 14, and there's our answer. Well, must be tired. Okay, now we have the probability question here, and it's saying we're drawing a green candy, and in the jar there's 20 candies, and well, the probability of getting a green candy is one out of four. Well, one out of four. We want to know well how many candies are there actually. That means it's going to be five out of 20. I realize that. 4 goes into 25 times, so um, 1 for every 4 is like 5 for every 20. Multiply this by 5. So we have 5 green candies, and we want to know, well, how many candies, yellow candies exactly, should we add to this jar in order to reduce the probability to 1 sixth of getting a green candy? So we're not changing the number of green candies, we're changing the number of yellow candies. So we leave the amount of green candies. So 1 out of 6, what does that equal to? It's kind of close to 20. Well, um, what you can do here is, is kind of scale up this 1 sixth and think about your options as to what you're doing. And what I can see in this problem is that if I actually add 4 yellow candies, I would have 24, 20 fourths, and 6 goes to that 4 times. Okay, so what does that mean? Well. 5 out of 24, going back to the green candies, does that help me? Is that 1 6? No. So maybe this approach is not helping. So what I'm going to do instead is think, well, I have 5 out of 20. 5 out of what equals 1 out of 6? So, in other words, what would this have to be? What, is, what number here is 6 times greater than 5? And that's 30. So we need 30 candies. So what do we do? We add 10 candies to the bin. If we had 10 yellow candies, we'll have 30 candies in all, and only 5 of them will be yellow, and it's 5 out of 30, or 1 out of 6.